first story takes place at the very end of Paul's life. He's in the Mamertine prison in Rome. He's been accused of burning down half of Rome by Emperor Nero, and he's alone and in the darkness. And if you remember from Acts of the Apostles, a very important figure in Paul's life is Luke, the physician. And so our story is about Luke sneaking into Rome to bring some solace to Paul in his last days. And what comes out of it is that Luke and Paul decide we need to get Paul's story to the world. And this is sort of the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles being written. Very, very difficult days of early Christianity. And this is Paul's last few moments to convey the message of hope and love and forgiveness to the community and that they must hold fast to the faith no matter what dangers they face. When I looked at this screenplay, I was amazed at the survival of Christianity rests with just a couple, couple of people. Priscilla and Aquila are, are hiding out, essentially, and taking people who need help. And they were facing persecution, they were facing obliteration, they were facing uh, exile, they were facing many, many things. And they still welcomed people, they still accepted people, they still loved people. And that, that is easier said than done. It's a modern story. This is why Shakespeare is still relevant today, Molière, and the great stories never die because they talk about human beings and humanity. This film, to me, is one that goes out to the world. It goes out and says, this is what these guys were. And the people that are going to watch it are going to say, wow, they're a sinner like me. And, and very human very believable, very round. They have doubt, they have fear, they have anger. They're very real. The notion that someone could make a radical change in their life, that could go from being a thug to being one of the most important people in religious history, intrigued me. We have a tendency to put people like that on a pedestal, and there's almost becomes this disconnect, like I'm not as holy as they are, you know? Um, God set them apart in a unique way, in a special way. It's not the same as me, but the reality is they were just like us. They weren't born with halos around their heads. Here's a man, Paul, who went from the ISIS of his day to becoming the leader of a church community. And I thought, is that, do we really think that that's possible today, that a person can change? Um, I think the modern way of looking at people is that like, once you do something, uh, that really defines your life. And I think Paul helps us show that no one is beyond God's grace that um, there's always a chance. It's really Paul that brought the faith to a wider church in the face of everything. And his uh, adamantine soul, we have to be very grateful for. This old, beaten, worn down man who had, had left everything on the playing field for Jesus. You know, he, he lived this life and was at the very end to see this frail old man and think that the emperor of the largest kingdom in the world was fearful of this broken man shows the power of Christ through his followers, through his believers. I just am so excited to tell this story uh, and, and offer these themes to the world at a time when I think that we are so desperate to hear these things, to hear that we're loved, to hear that there is mercy and grace for anything, to hear that there is a God that's bigger than us, that loves us, and, and that we cannot fall too far from His grasp. <laughs>